All right, hello, welcome back to my Sunday live series. I am Dr. Sarah Louie, AKA the hip doc. And my passion in my profession is helping women with hip pain return to running pain-free as fast as possible. Um, and on my Sunday live series, I have just wanted to use this space to talk about running and rehab and hips um, and kind of where all of those things coincide. Um, and I've gotten the chance to just bring on a couple of amazing women in the running community. Um, today, I'm gonna bring on one of my good friends and doctor of physical therapy, Anya Vieira. She is a doctor of physical therapy um, and she's also a certified certified strength and conditioning specialist so she has excellence in rehab and returning people to high level functions such as crossfit or surfing or running um, and all of those things and she has also done extensive um, training in pelvic health therapy she's gone through some of like the best courses that I think are offered out there um, so she is so much more knowledgeable than your Facebook groups and than your aunt Margot who tells you to do your kegels um, so tune in and let's get her on here um, this is all we oh here we go I did so I invited her on, let's see how this goes. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hi, Anya. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh my gosh, yeah, I can. <laughs> Excellent. I feel like I just make it a little muffled. I'm okay. using my mom's good? ring light, so I feel really fancy. Oh my gosh, I, your mom has a ring light? Oh yeah. I it's aggressive. That. Oh, she teaches, she teaches. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. She's in full support of this. So she was like, I'll step out for a little bit. And I was like, okay, I love it. Thanks. <laughs> my mom is also like my first follower on everything. So I'm like, <laughs> I feel this so, so deeply. Oh my gosh. I love it. <laughs> um, okay. How's the day been? How's the weekend been? Very lazy. I got into a biking accident and I actually have a small muscle strain on my adductor. I don't know if you can see that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this is a great time to talk about pelvic floor stuff because I can't go on runs right now. Your girl's in rest, ice, elevate, and light movement currently. <laughs> light movement. Light movement is light key. Movement. Yeah. Door activity. <laughs> Dang it. That is crazy. That's a nasty mm -hmm. group. Yeah, not so fun, but we're okay. I went to the city yesterday and has just been resting and organizing for my move back to Maui. Yes, you're moving back to Maui. So how is um, like work stuff with that transition? Where, where are you going to be? I Maui? will be at Maui Memorial Hospital at a travel contract. So I'm doing travel contract to get my feet wet for a little bit, see what's out there. Um, it's going to be very different because it'll be a transition. I've been doing like 70% pelvic floor issues yeah. and orthopedic. Yeah. And then I fill in at the hospital like two or three days a month. Mm -hmm. um, so this will just be just hospital work um, mm -hmm. and acute care rehab just for now. So I can make a little extra cash and then get my feet wet and see what I want to do and kind of hopefully start my own business eventually out there. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And like, if you're, if you're going out there, you want to get in the right um, spot, like with yeah. maybe a health, I don't know, person and just find the right area and, and place that you want to work. So I think it's a little bit more challenging than just uh, finding a job. Yeah. And it's so underserved. So I think there's only like one or two pelvic floor physical therapists out there that I know of. So it'll be interesting getting into that whole realm of things. Dang. Yeah, I'm working on Kauai right now, and I had a patient that, like, I think needs more uh, care for pelvic floor stuff, and I was like, hey, do, like, who do we refer to, you know, like, is there mm -hmm. anyone on this island that does that, and my boss was like, oh, uh, there's, like, one person, and I know who it is, yeah, <laughs> they're far, like, from where I treat, and my mm -hmm. client is not gonna go all the way over there, so I was like, okay, I, I can do it, it's fine, it's fine, yeah. we'll, we'll make it work. Yeah, 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 I love it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so my first question for you is how slash why did you get into pelvic floor therapy or yeah, pelvic floor? Well, you were in school with me. So I, we were both like, no, why would we ever do this? This is why? ridiculous. Why would anyone get into pelvic floor physical therapy? And then we had Dr. Rowling, who is just like the best of the best, our pelvic floor yeah. professor and tegumentary professor. And she was just like, so amped. Like, yeah way too amped about pelvic floor physical therapy so I loved it and yes. I just loved her energy with it all and I remember being like okay you know I'm gonna take a course 
I want to help an underserved group of people and pelvic floor yeah. is super underserved. So I'm going to just take a course. And if I hate it, I hate it. And I get into pediatrics again and possibly neuro PT or yeah. I get really into it. And I loved it. It was just such a cool course. It was like women helping women, which I really enjoyed. And as I've gotten more into it, it's definitely way more involved than women helping women. And right. it's just such an intimate area where people are talking to you about things that they wouldn't talk to their normal health providers. And I just really like that intimacy. And I really like, I don't know, just that trust that you have with each other as a, a medical provider. So I really enjoyed it there. And then finding out I had my own pelvic floor issues too, obviously was like, wow, this has been helping myself. So it's been really cool to like rehab myself with the help of like my colleagues and um, my peers in pelvic floor physical therapy as well. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I, think, I like what you said about like learning from Dr. Rowling, how, like how hyped she was about pelvic floor therapy. It's like, we don't care how many certifications people have. Like really, we just like buy into people's energy about something and also like their experience. Like, so you going through this yourself, it's like your patients are like, you care about this so much and you've gone through this. Like, I trust you and I want to work with you. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really like that with it all too. It's just, I don't know, it's just such a trust with it all. And I just realized, Sarah, we're on my personal Instagram. Oh shoot, um, let me switch over. Yeah, yeah switch over. Uh, okay. Here, maybe I'll, should I uh, request? I'll request um... <laughs> the private parts physio. Yeah, yeah. I'll request. Okay, okay. Cool. Inviting. Oh my gosh. See, That's I don't know fun. anything about technology. This is why I went into healthcare. <laughs> all right she's joining y'all when this is done you can just fast forward through this part honestly this is good except there we go I think I've accepted her. Accept. Is unable to join. Oh no. <laughs> oh, this is sad. All right. Accept. We did it. There we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was like, you know, private parts physio was unable to join. And I was like, well, this is why we went into healthcare because we don't know about We don't it. know. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. So, yes, when this is done, everyone can fast forward through that little glitch there. Um, <laughs> So I, what were we talking about? We were talking about just, I don't know, people being amped about their profession and it's more, it's beyond just like the certifications. It's, it's yes. also just people being excited. Yes. I'm, I'm feeling it. Yes. Um, okay. So what are some common complaints or things that you've seen um, with pelvic floor dysfunction with runners specifically? So I do treat a lot of, well, where I was, I was in Marina, which is right near a big military base in Monterey. And so I okay. treated a lot of military, um, okay. mostly army and Navy, but I did see some Marines as well. Um, okay. So that was, it's a very niche group of athletes. Um, yeah. yeah. So I got to see a lot of postpartum returning to military work. Um, so that oh, was really cool. Yeah. And then I also saw a lot of relative energy deficiency in sport um, injuries from overtraining, under eating, um, and all of the things we know about relative energy deficiency. And so then I actually saw a decent amount of femoral um, head fractures and then yeah. them getting hospitalized, yeah. coming yeah. back to military, and then yes. having uh, urinary leakage, pain with sex, all of these other things. And they're like, I just hurt my hip. Like, why is this happening to me? And they yes. come to me with that. Um, and so then I also see it obviously with like running and I saw the pelvic pain that would happen and the urinary leakage that would happen with running too. So kind of a mix of hip injuries, but also postpartum returning to sport. Yes. 
Okay. I'm fascinated. The reds or the relative energy deficiency syndrome, do they, mm -hmm. were they um, uh, military people? Mostly marine women. Yeah. I actually saw three marine women who had reds. So what mm -hmm. was your, actually, first of all, can you tell us what reds is? Um, oh my gosh. Let's see if I can. I, can, really I, can help you too. I know. Yeah. So, well, my biggest understanding of it is just, it's a, you're expending more energy than your body is intaking. Um, mm -hmm. And your body can't like keep up with it. And so your bone integrity actually decreases as well as you have all these menstrual cycle changes too. Um, it can be super associated with um, dispersed eating. So you're not eating enough, um, exercising too much. Um, and then like some body dysmorphia issues too can be associated with it. Um, we mostly thought it was just in women. So we called it the female athlete triad. And now yeah. we're finding out it's in men yeah. as well. Um, and everyone in between. And so it's been a lot more on the forefront of um, people's minds, especially in the orthopedic community. Yes. Yeah. You know what I think is just so fascinating? So you're a pelvic floor therapist and, you know, maybe I, in my mind, I'm like, oh, you just treat the, the muscles and then the stuff that is around there. And then you make people not have to pee and whatever. But it's with these conversations that you have with your, your patients that are that, you know, have a femoral neck stress fracture, you actually like get this whole picture of like, I'm not feeling myself well enough. And I also, you know, which led to this uh, stress fracture. And then I also like have pain with sex. And I also like can't run like it's not just this like linear thing. Um, which is why I think you guys are an amazing set of people, practitioners. Yeah, it's a lot of the psychosocial associated with the orthopedic associated with the pelvic floor focus. So it's been interesting to kind of like, get my mind from one step on each and then like intermelding that and like, how, how can I treat this patient where we're hitting it from all sides of things? That is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> so like, how do you treat these patients? Like, what is your if there's like so many things going on, like how are you bringing hope to your patients that need to get back to, to work as a military uh, person or person service or um, like just a runner that wants to be able to do what they want to do? Yeah, I think step one is just being someone who's going to like listen and really hearing out. So are we getting a lot of random calls? Um, <laughs> really, oh, is that a landline? <laughs> landline. <laughs> um, we are really listening to what these patients have to say and understanding. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> One second. Oh my gosh. This is good. Sorry. Okay. We're really listening to these patients and, and hearing where their injury started, what time it started, like what was the mechanism of injury. And like, just even hearing that, I think buys in and they, they want to be heard. They want someone to understand, like I had a hip injury and now I'm having urinary leakage with running. Cause okay. a lot of other people don't necessarily associate those two. Yeah. Um, and so just having that, like, okay, that makes sense. Like that makes sense as a buy-in and then also hearing like what their goals are. So asking them what their goals are. And so for my military patients, it's like, what do you need to do to get back to your job? Um, and then for my military women, it's like some pretty extensive stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like pretty heavy stuff. And so it's been, I think just with that and having that buy-in of like, okay, great. This is how we're going to go about this treatment and doing an assessment. That's not just like pelvic floor. It's like, yeah. I'm going to look at how you're doing these things. I'm going to immediately look at how you're running. Like I'm not just mm -hmm. going to do all these small little tests, but we're going to listen. And then I'm going to assess exactly what you're having symptoms with. And I think that in itself is a buy-in of like what you're saying makes sense. Here's how we'll go about treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. Do you feel like your, uh, I don't really know, like your uh, recent certification in uh, strength and conditioning has like helped you with kind of getting back to those like higher end clients and like drawing the whole circle together? Yeah, for sure. So I actually, I've, I've had some really interesting patients where um, I had a patient who was in, I think it's like the Scotland Games where it's like the Irish games, it's where they like lift ginormous like boulders and they throw them over and they're like, throw. it's insane. And she had a baby 
and had all these other issues with it. And so we were talking about like returning to not just running, but lifting super heavy. And so like understanding how we need to like discuss this training program beyond just pelvic floor, like how to properly get into lifting again. Um, okay, your sport looks like this. Here is what we need to train. And here's yeah. how we go about the rest periods too, because I think one of the things I've noticed with a lot of my lifting and running athletes actually is just like how they um, how they they do their training. So like one mm -hmm. of my patients actually, um, she was just like general off the couch runner, just like a mom of like 55, I think had two babies and she's had urinary leakage with running for the past 10 years. Like it didn't start after babies or anything like that. It just was this yeah. gradual thing that happened and she just kept running through it. And we finally, her goal was five miles. Like she just wanted to run five miles, no urinary leakage. And so mm -hmm. we were able to get to two or three. And every time we got to three was when she'd have leakage, okay. like every single time. And so yeah. finally, when we looked, when I had, I just got my cert and I was like, let's talk about how you're training. Like how many yeah. days a week do you train? How yeah. fast are you doing it? What's yeah. your zones like too? Like what is your zone mm -hmm. training? And we realized she was just overtraining. She was yeah. running seven days a week. She was trying to run four miles yeah. and she was yeah. trying to run at her fastest pace. Yeah. yeah. And so once it was like, I could understand how training was affecting her. We were able to say like 80% is going to be a slow, steady, smaller runs. 20% mm -hmm. is your faster, longer runs. Yes. Um, and once we were able to do that, we were able to hit five miles like regularly without urinary leakage. So right. I think it's been really helpful to have like this understanding in what proper training is. That is so cool. I think I talked about this with Kaylee last week, but she was like, you know, so many people just think that rehab is you go there and you lay on this table and then they do something to you and then all of your exercises are laying down and then that's, you know, that's what it is. But uh, with the like wealth of knowledge that we have, there's so much more that we can do um, even outside of the sessions. And like with my clients, like I can take them on and then direct them like, this is what your rehab is, but this is also like what your return to run progression should look like. This is exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Um, and then you're able to get those results and it's outside of your, you know, sideline clamshells. Um, which sounds like also what you're able to do with your pelvic health, health clients as well. Yeah, definitely. It's been, it's been really cool to like step back from that beginning portion when you just start, you know, and you're like, okay, two or three months and they got to be out of here. Like we're, yes. we're going to kick them out of PT after two or three months if they're not better. And it's like, no, let's reduce this to one time a month and let's talk about their training. And that's actually a really functional physical therapy visit where it's beyond just like, let's do these exercises and walk you through this program, especially when I have athletes that are already doing that. Like I don't need to do that for them, but they don't necessarily know how to taper themselves or build themselves up or properly progress their programs. And so that's what we do once a month and I'll see them for nine months before I discharge them. I love it. I love it. I think um, one of the greatest things that I heard from like one of my business mentors is he said the idea of discharge is absolutely awful he was like you maybe it's like you don't want to see them every every like twice a week like that's a lot yeah you know, for a long time maybe in the first like four to six weeks but then from there it's like gosh if we can keep these people in our system and like check in with them once a month once every three months and then they have that accountability they can like ask you questions um it is just such a win for both of you and then they're not going back to these huge regressions yeah, definitely. It's really, really cool to see that. And it's just, I don't know. It's also, it, that's part of the building rapport of like, I don't need to see you every two, two times a week. I don't need to do that. But like, I do want to talk about how we're going to progress things. And I think that's a buy-in for them of like, okay, I'm going to keep up with this. I got this and I'm independent in this. And then I'll come to you and then we'll talk about how I can be more independent in the next realm of things. I like it. Yeah. Um, do you have any clients, client stories that you're like, this was just such a fun one to walk through. This is like kind of where they were. And then this is where they ended. Anything that comes off the bat that you're like, oh, this is like, this is me in a nutshell. I mean, I feel like my, that mom that I treated was really cool. Like it was just yeah. really fun to treat where it was like, we actually started off really simple where it was like single leg balance because she just couldn't balance on one leg for 10 seconds, which you need to yeah. do for running obviously. Yes. And then building that up, like we, I did see her one or two times a week for three weeks. And then it was like building up from, 
understanding what her pelvic floor was doing. And she did have a lot of pelvic floor overactivity, um, difficulty with balance, um, and then just some light strength deficits that we slowly worked through to being like, this is what your program should look like if you're running as often as you're doing that. Um, and then progressing that into like some light plyometrics and then mm-hmm. progressing that into, okay, now we're going to start talking about that 80, 20% role too. Yes. Um, and it was actually, uh, one of my coworkers who he just does strict ortho. He's yeah. like this 55 year old man and he's amazing. He's like the best PT I know. Like I, he's, he's my mentor at my old clinic. Um, yes. and he was the one when I was like, we're hitting a wall. Like, I don't know how to progress her, like, what are we doing? And he was like, well, we just talked about this. Here are a couple podcasts. Like, let's talk about what you're learning in your strength and conditioning, like coach training too. And just having that inner melding of just like your strict ortho PT and then the pelvic floor world and like being able to talk about that was really helpful and really cool to also see how we can like progress this person to her five miles a day goal without urinary leakage yeah. like it seems so simple but it was actually like a lot more complex than I think most people thought of course what a win what a huge win with yeah. her did you do any internal work I did for the first couple of the first couple of weeks I did internal work with her um and then once we were able to say like here's the stretches to, to go to here's the breath work to go to then she was able to kind of do things on her own for pelvic floor releases okay. yeah nice. So is that kind of what you find with a lot of your clients? Is that like you start off with some internal work and then progress to none? Yeah, I almost always like, as long as they're comfortable with it, I almost always will check pelvic floor, especially if they're having pelvic floor dysfunction symptoms, like leakage, pelvic pain, um, hip or back pain with like tailbone pain or anything like that. I'm going to check it um, just to see what their strength is, what their coordination is. Um, because like we learned in school, you want to treat symptoms first. So treat symptoms, be able to manage their symptoms or else they're going to feel hopeless. Um, yeah. And then once you can manage their symptoms, once they can manage their symptoms, then you're going to progress and like, let's get back into what was causing these symptoms to start off with, which Mm -hmm. isn't always pelvic floor to start off with. Um, and it can just be like that femoral neck fracture that we talked about too. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. The, the clear, clear pain, clear symptoms first. It's just like, I feel like so many people think they're going to come to PT. It's going to be really painful. It's going to be really awful. And like in my initial evals and my working with my clients, I think the most important thing is just decide what your goals are and that or we decide what your goals are um, and have a conversation about that and then mm-hmm. like ha- figure out how to clear your pain as fast as we can um, and then build from there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very rare. I see just pelvic floor issues. Like the, yeah. the Marine women I see, like they have a lot of unilateral, like leg deficits, like a lot of unilateral balance issues, strength deficits, um, that have been caused because of having a femoral neck fracture where they were non weight bearing for way too excessive time in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so it's been, yeah, it's been really cool to see how we progress that and also being, having them see like, this caused you to have pelvic floor issues. So the pelvic floor issues is secondary. So we're going to treat this, make sure you don't have pain anymore or like the leakage with just normal activities. And then we're going to treat all these other deficits that happen because of your actual injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've really enjoyed hearing about how you are such a uh, like holistic provider with your like assessment and and treatment um, and then hearing about your progressions, because I think that is, that's just what gets people better, honestly. Yeah. And it's been interesting. And I'm sure, I know that you talk about this too, because of reds, but like talking to your patients about nutrition and like knowing what our scope is, like we do have a scope with nutrition and knowing what my understanding and your understanding is, is like way less than like a nutritionist or dietitian. Of course. But like understanding the proper nutrition intake you need Yes. And then also understanding like how your nutrition affects your bowel movements, which is going to affect pelvic floor and everything else too. Um, so yeah, it's been really cool to see. And I know, I think a lot more pelvic floor and dr- normal therapists are talking more about that as well. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I have two really good resources that I'll link at the end of the show. Um, one is her accounts marathon nutritionist and she does fueling like just for marathoners, um, cool. which is amazing. And then um, I think it's Rebecca McConnell is her name. I'll link it after this. Um, yeah, she does, I want to see. 
she does a ton of work in reds like specifically for the female athlete um so those are two people that i'm like really just eating up all of their content yeah Um, definitely i have like two more like easy questions for you but is there anything else that you um want to say about just like public floor therapy in general or like yeah anything Mm -hmm. anything you want to share i think it's a lot less intimate i mean it is very intimate it is we typically we're gonna check what your pelvic floor is looking like but i think a lot i know a lot of us are very um sensitive where we're gonna be we're gonna make sure we're within your comfort levels um we don't want to rush you through anything either and i think a lot of people got really nervous about that portion and we're not typically doing a pelvic floor assessment day one like Day one, we want to get to know you. We want to know what's causing your issues. We're going to check your functional movements first. Um, and I want people to, like, know that, too. And yeah. whatever people's comfort level is with this, like, we're going to meet you where you're at. Um, and no one's going to force you to do anything. And if they do, they're the wrong provider for you. Um, yeah. And you have the right to say, like, I'm actually – I'm out of here. I don't want to do this. Um, mm-hmm. So I think – knowing that I have a lot of my patients who come in with urinary leakage and pelvic pain with running and lifting is they're just like, I'm a strong woman and I don't want to be made felt like I'm inferior. And, um, they come in nervous about those exams, understandably so. And so I think it's understanding like a lot of us treat what we have also dealt with. And so we've been in similar shoes to you. And so it's, I think that is helpful to like, remember as well. It's like, we want, we want to help you and we want to be where you're at. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Our goals are to make your goals, our goals. Yeah. And I think also, sorry, I'm going to like go off more, but like, I just, and it's really cool been talking to you about it all because I'm seeing more PTs when they're educated about pelvic floor stuff being like, this is a pelvic floor related issue and yeah. I can actually treat this. Of course. I'm not going to do internal. I may do external. I may not, but like I can treat this with other things that I'm doing. And I think it's been cool to like talk with my old coworkers about it and they feel a lot more confident in treating like a pregnant woman or a postpartum woman um, or person um, as well as anyone with pelvic floor dysfunction. They're just like, Oh, I can do this. Like I can do this. And if I hit a wall, then I know I need to refer out. Yes, of course. Yeah, there is so much that um, I have been able to do externally that, you know, providers can do externally um, and can provide so much value for the patient externally. Um, And then, yeah, once if you're working with a good practitioner and and you're not getting better and there's a wall that's being hit, there is a due diligence to find the right practitioner for that person. Um, Yeah, that is like my that's my goal when I'm when that happens with me. Yeah, I'm curious what your comfort level is with like pelvic floor stuff. Like I know I know we've talked about it, but like what your pelvic floor knowledge is and where your your understanding of like, you know, this is within my scope and I can treat this. Like do you have any patients that have pelvic floor issues that you're like, I know I can I know how to treat this and I feel comfortable doing that. Yeah, I think when my clients, so let's say I've been working with them, um and typically it comes up in conversation. Like it'll be like, oh like you know, I need to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, well, how many times have you gone to the bathroom? Like they just went and then they went again. And then that's an excellent segue for me to be like, well, how often are you doing this? Like, are you, is this interfering with your running at all? Um, and if they have a relatively simple history, so like maybe they are, um, you know, pre, pre-partum, like they never had a baby or maybe they're postpartum and they, they had like a relatively like easy birth, we'll say. Um, and I assess their pelvic floor externally and, and things seem to be working and firing pretty well. Um, then, or maybe there's some dysfunction and then I'll give them exercise and whatnot to do for that. Um, if they're not getting better with what that, what I have prescribed for them, I will refer them for an internal exam. And oftentimes I will tell you, patients typically don't want to leave me even though they're going to a pelvic floor provider who has done internal work and, and says, hey, yeah, I think they might benefit from some internal work. The patient is like, I've already gained so much trust with you. Like, I don't want to go to another provider. So I have just ended up taking on, you know, they'll teach me techniques or whatever that I can do externally um, yeah. and, and then treat the patient and um, move forward with that. I love it. That's awesome. Good yeah. for you. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's really been fun. And it's been fun to 
um, like I love treating hips and that is literally right next door to the hip. So if I'm not looking at it, I'm missing it. So yeah, I think it's, it's a literally attached to the hip. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's right there. It's uh-huh. right there. It's yeah. right there. Um, my last two questions for you is where can you find, do you have any good resources on finding a good pelvic floor provider in your area? There's a couple. I'll definitely send them your way. Um, pelvic guru has a whole thing, pelvicguru.com. Um, you can plug in your provider, you can plug in um, your area code and it should come up with a list of providers around you. Um, there's also vagina rehab doctor. She actually has a really great resource resource, sorry, for um, uh, pelvic floor therapists. And it's usually actually pelvic floor therapists um, of color as well. So it's really cool to find providers that you actually want to connect to that you feel like you're connecting with. Um, And then there's also one other one that I was a part of. um, So I'll try and look it up and send it to you too. But those are like the three main ones. So pelvicguru.com, vagina rehab doctor um, on her Instagram, she has something that links over as well. Okay, cool. And I'll link a few of my, my gals as well that I, that I like to work with and refer to. Um, And my last question for you is where can we find more about you? Um, Private parts, private parts underscore physio. Um, And then obviously I'm moving to Maui. So um, a lot of people on the islands, I think can reach out to me over there. Um, I do have my Hawaii and California license. So I can treat people in both of those states. Um, And I'm going to hopefully be starting my own kind of like either cash-based clinic um, or just discussion or anything like that um, through my Instagram. So just keep a look on my Instagram and I'll post things that way. Okay. And that'll be not on your personal Instagram. Not on my personal Instagram, but (laughs) if people find me there, I have some fun stuff. So that's fine. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This is like it's always so insightful to learn from you. You have so many things that I don't know. So I love talking to you. Um, but I also think our listeners liked it as well, or hopefully will. Yes. I love talking to other people about this. And I just think it's so cool to see so many other providers who are like going out of their comfort zone and treating pelvic floor issues and also just interested in like okay what can I do to like better help my patients too so it's been really cool to see how like you've gotten into this niche and are like kind of getting I don't know just a little bit more focused within it and seeing how pelvic floor is related to all of it it's been fun yeah Mm -hmm. so I appreciate you (laughs) appreciate you how um come see me in Kauai and I'll come visit you on Maui yay okay perfect (laughs) okay bye okay bye